Good morning. My name is David Greenfield. I'm the councilman from the 44th District in Brooklyn. I'm privileged to serve as the chair of the Land Use Committee. I want to welcome my esteemed colleagues who are members of the committee who have joined us today. Councilmember Gentili, Councilmember Palma, Councilmember Garodnik, Councilmember Lander, Councilmember Williams, Chair Richards, Councilmember Cohen, Councilmember Kalos, Councilmember Reynoso, Councilmember Torres, Councilmember Gradenchik, and we've also been joined by Councilmember Perkins and Chair Salamanca as well. I want to thank Chair Salamanca, Chair Richards, and Chair Koo for outstanding work on our land use subcommittees. Today we will hold a public hearing on the pre-considered resolution for the Restore New York Communities Initiative pursuant to the New York State Urban Development Act by which the Empire State Development Corporation provides financial assistance to municipalities. EDC is seeking funding for street scrape improvements in Councilmember Lansman's and in Councilmember Miller's districts. The grant would provide up to $5 million for this work related to the Station Plaza project in Jamaica. After this hearing, we will vote on all of the items that are on our agenda. I will now open the public hearing on this item. Uh, I will ask our first panel to introduce themselves. And is it just you that will be speaking, or is it the entire panel? Um, so it will be the three of us speaking. OK, great. So can you introduce yourself first, and then uh, we'll start. we will start the uh, uh, hearing. Can we just identify ourselves first? Sure. Thank you, Chair Greenfield and fellow council members. So my name is Eleni Boronaris. I'm being joined by my colleague Callie Williams and Liza Kent, all of us from the New York City Economic Development Corporation. Okay, great. Before we begin, it is our practice here in the council to ask you to swear or affirm that everything you're about to say is true. Do you swear or affirm that everything, your testimony and your answers to all questions that you say is in fact truthful? Yes, I do. Yes. Okay, with that, you may begin. Great. Um, so today we're before the City Council seeking approval to submit a grant application for $5 million to fund the demolition, reconstruction, and improvements as part of the Station Plaza project in Jamaica, Queens. Um, this is in Councilmember Rory Lansman's district and in Councilmember uh, Idenik Miller's district. So this is a New York State municipal grant for the revitalization of communities and stabilization of neighborhoods across New York City. Uh, we are applying for Station Plaza for the maximum amount of funding for this grant. It's $5 million, and Station Plaza uh, complies with each of the criteria for which priority is given. So projects in Empire Zones and Brownfield Opportunity Areas, projects that leverage other state and federal redevelopment, remediation, and planning programs, and projects in economically distressed communities. So this Restore Grant Program was launched in September of 2017 by the Empire State Development Corporation. And the eligible projects include pro buildings that are vacant, abandoned, condemned, or surplused. And those the funding could be used for um, those buildings to be demolished, deconstructed, rehabilitated, or reconstructed. And so we are before you, the council, today. Um, asking for a municipal resolution and approval to submit for this grant. So Station Plaza is, is part of several initiatives in the Jamaica area. This project is being done with the goal of improving pedestrian safety and alleviating traffic congestion in this area. This was part of the Jamaica 2007 rezoning plan, which was approved by the council. And that plan was envisioned as a vibrant, as creating a vibrant new gateway to Jamaica's commercial corridor. This was part of a suite of projects, three projects in total, in partnership with Greater Jamaica Development Corporation. And so we had Stephan Underpass, which was completed in 2013, um, and the Atlantic Avenue extension, which design was completed, and now we are embarking on construction in the first part of uh, Q1 2018. This is also part of the Jamaica Now Action Plan, which was released in 2015 and includes 26 action items that were identified by community members, stakeholders, and partners. And we continue to work with the Jamaica Now Leadership Council on all of those initiatives. So turning to Station Plaza, so this is located at the intersection of Archer Avenue and Stephan Boulevard in Jamaica, Queens. And we are looking on ma at making critical safety enhancements in new public plazas. So it would be the acquisition of uh, several sites. Three sites we have already acquired, and the fourth we are in no negotiation to acquire. Two new plazas, widening the sidewalks, new medians, subway entrances, and overall circulation improvements. So this funding, the Restore New York funding, would be for the demolition, improvement, and rehabilitation of, and remediation of those four buildings. 
So in terms of next steps, we're before the City Council Land Use Committee today for this hearing. Um, we anticipate a vote at the City Council stated meeting on December 11th, and the application is due on the 15th. We anticipate hearing back on whether or not we have been, were a recipient of this award in around spring 2018. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask you a question. The Jamaica Now Action Plan, how much is the uh, total cost of that plan anticipated? The Jamaica Action Plan, the 26 uh, actions, were about a $153 million commitment from the city. Okay, great. And where are you in that process of those so action items? Sure. 16 of those actions are already in some type of pre-planning um, process, and we report on those regularly to the Jamaica Now Leadership Council. Okay, great. Thank you. I will note that the two council members who represent the district support the project as well. Are there any other questions from members of the committee? Are there any members of the public who wish to testify on this item? Seeing none, I will now close the public hearing on this item. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. We will now move on to our votes. We will be voting to modify LU817, the self-storage text amendment. The self-storage text amendment is a zoning action to establish new restrictions on self-storage development within designated areas and M districts, which largely coincide with industrial business zones. These areas include part of the 24 city council districts throughout all of the boroughs except Manhattan. The Department of City Planning is the applicant for the citywide zoning text amendment. The administration and the council together announced the intent to advance restrictions on the development of self-storage facilities in the industrial business zone in November 2015 as part of the 10-point industrial action plan to modernize the city's industrial policy. This came, of course, after the New York City Council released its own report, The Engines of Opportunity, and one of the recommendations in fact, is, was exactly what we are doing today. The industrial sector in New York City provides over 500,000 jobs for a majority minority and immigrant workforce, and on average pays middle class wages to many workers who may not be able to find comparable opportunities in other sectors. Self storage, self -storage can currently locate in any M or C8 zone throughout the city. Over 70% of self storage is currently located outside of IBCs, and this action with the modifications still provide ample siting opportunities for self storage facilities across New York City. But as self-storage facilities continue to be built, this action will ensure that the growth does not undermine the economic development objectives of the city to support the industrial business sector and preserve siting opportunities in industrial business zones for job-intensive industrial businesses. After hearing from many stakeholders, the council has decided upon a hybrid proposal that establishes a special permit in most IBZs, but allows an as-of-right self-storage option in certain areas in order to allow additional opportunities for as-of-right development of self-storage in specific areas where appropriate across the city. The as of right option will apply to the Bathgate IBZ in the Bronx, the Steinway IBZ and Map 1 of the Jamaica IBZ in Queens, and the West Shore and Rossville IBZs in Staten Island. In determining these areas, the council considered numerous factors. Brooklyn already has the most self-storage facilities of any borough and has experienced a particularly acute shortage of industrial siting opportunities. Therefore, the special permit was considered appropriate throughout the borough. In the Bronx and Queens, Bathgate, Steinway, and Map 1 of the Jamaica IBZs all only have one existing self-storage facility each compared to IBZs such as Eastchester, Zurega, and the other sections of the Jamaica IBZ that are already heavily saturated. These areas were therefore deemed appropriate for an as-of-right development option because there is only one self-storage. In Staten Island, the West Shore and Rossville areas have very large swaths of vacant land, and the competition for industrial siting opportunities is far less acute than in other IBZs in the city. The Council has substantially revised the mixed-use requirements for these areas in order more easily facilitate as a right self storage development by increasing the lot size threshold to 50,000 square feet from 25,000 square feet in those areas. The special permit will apply in the Port Morris, Hunts Point, Zurega, East Chester IBCs in the Bronx, all IBCs in Brooklyn, Long Island City, Ridgewood, Masspath, Woodside, JFK, Jamaica Maps, 2 4 in Queens, and North Shore IBC in Staten Island. Special, requirement, special permit requirement, folks, is not a ban on self storage in this area. It is simply a special permit requirement. We are confident that developers will be able to make successful applications for sites that are appropriate for self-storage development. I would just like to add that this is something that the council has been working on for many years. It was initially in our Engines of Opportunities report, and the reality is that up until now, IBZs have just been a name without any, quite frankly, teeth in terms of enforcement giving these IBZs the ability to separate from other areas. To be clear, the IBZs are only a portion of manufacturing areas in New York City. For a decade, we've said that the IBZs are special locations. We, we want to encourage industrial businesses, and in order to do that, we need to provide protections for those areas. The reality is that self-storage can pay twice as much as industrial areas in terms of what they would pay for development, and the reason for that is that it is far more profitable 
than industrial businesses would be. And that is one of the reasons why we are trying to protect these areas, because they are specifically industrial business zones. So with that, I want to thank all of my colleagues who have weighed in on this. And I would certainly like to encourage my colleagues to support this. And I would recommend a yes vote on the application, as was modified. 20 of the 25 members who have IBZs were in support of the original application. The five members who had concerns, we made appropriate modifications to accommodate the concerns of those members. We will also be voting to approve LUs 805 through 807, the National Black Theater application with two modifications. The applicant, NBT Victory Development LLC, seeks approval of a zoning map amendment, zoning tax amendments, and a special permit to waive accessory residential parking permits. The res resulting development in Councilmember Perkins District would include a new space to be owned and operated by the National Black Theater. We will be modifying the tax amendment to eliminate MIH option two and add the deep affordability option. And we will be modifying the special permit application to clarify the, that parking waiver. We'll be voting with approval and modifications 1965 Lafayette Avenue rezoning, LUs 800 and 801 in Councilmember Palmas District. The modification will remove MIH option two. We'll also be voting to approve the two tax related exemptions and applications. HPD submitted both of these pre-considered applications under Article 11 of the Private Housing Finance Law to allow for a property tax exemption for the Lafayette development. We'll be voting on 1776 East Chester Road application, LUs 802 through 804 with modifications. The applications in Councilmember Vaca's District. It's for a zoning map, tax amendment, tax amendment, a special permit that would facilitate the development of 182 units of nonprofit hospital staff dwelling units. These units would house hospital staff for the nearby Montefiore Hospital. We'll be voting to modify the applications to remove from the rezoning the proposed C428 district to the south of the development site. We'll also be modifying tax amendment to remove MIH option one. We'll be voting to approve a pre-considered LU, deciding of a new approximately 404 seat primary school in Council Member Chaka's district. We'll also be voting to approve LU825, the small homes rehab tax exemption application in Council Member Mills District, this application is for a technical correction to a previously approved tax exemption. We'll be voting to approve the modification of special Holland River waterfront applications, LUs. 785 and 786. We previously voted to modify these applications. However, CPC subsequently determined that the council's inclusion of a reference to exterior street and its modification of the location of setbacks from Major Deegan Expressway was out of scope. Accordingly, we'll be voting to remove the reference to the exterior street in the sentence and to make a technical correction to the list of parcels in the same sentence. The rest of the modifications were determined to be in scope. We'll also be voting to approve a couple of pieces of legislation. Proposed interim number 1533-A, a local law to amend the city charter in relation to publication and reporting requirements for urban renewal plans. Proposed intro 1533-A would empower elected officials and their constituents with the tools needed to advocate for zoning and land use policies in neighbors that are currently and were formerly designated urban renewal areas. Proposed intro number 1533-A would make information about urban renewal areas and urban renewal plans, RPs, and the relationships to applicable zoning maps more transparent. I want to congratulate Councilmember Chin on her hard work on this issue. We'll be voting to approve proposed intro number 1661-A sponsored by Councilmember Espinal. This bill would require the city to establish a website in NYC.gov by July 1st, 2018 to promote commercial and community-based agriculture uses in the city of New York. Congratulations, Councilmember Espinal. We'll be voting to approve the pre-considered resolution for ESDC's Restore New York program for the Station Plaza project, which we held a hearing on earlier today. Are there any questions on these applications? Hearing none, I'm going to move to the remarks, and I'm going to start with Councilmember Perkins. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. I want to uh, just take a, a moment to uh, extend my uh, support uh, to one of the items on the agenda uh, known as the National Black Theater. And um, this is an, uh, an organization uh, that has uh, been a transformative force in our neighborhood uh, for many, many years uh, under the vision of uh, Barbara Ann Tier. For, and uh, we wanted to uh, make sure that uh, my colleagues understood how they have shown how culture can become very uh, powerful in terms of helping to uh, renovate a community, rehabilitate a community. Uh, this particular moment, they are also uh, not only just bringing their cultural and artistic genius uh, to, to the play, but they're also now looking into helping to develop housing, affordable housing in the neighborhood. So that shows artists can go beyond the art and the culture and get real nitty gritty in terms of what people need uh, for daily living in the neighborhood. So I just wanted to take a moment to ask my colleagues to support this project. Uh, it's a very, very worthy project to say the least. And I'm proud to have uh, spent so much time with them over the years. Um, and I have to give them credit for, in many respects, for my own vision on what's good for the community uh, from a, not only an artistic point of view, but also from a a sort of cultural and moral point of view as well. So 
Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Perkins, and thank you for the work in trying to make sure that this is a successful project. I'm going to turn it over to Councilmember Chin to make remarks on her urban renewal legislation intro 1533-A. Good afternoon. Thank you uh, to Chair Greenfield and members of the Land Use Committee for holding a vote today on a landmark piece of legislation. Intro 1533-A will provide for the first time public access to the urban renewal plans that changed the shape of New York City for decades. The city has adopted over 150 urban renewal plans since 1949. But until now, the public could not access any of these information without a costly freedom of information law request. There was no way for us to know whether our communities were in an urban renewal area and without requirements to notify the public when a plan is about to expire, our communities are left in the dark about the impacts of urban renewal plans or the lack of one. This is exactly what happened when the Two Bridges urban renewal plan expired in my district in 2007. The protection lapsed and the developers saw the opportunity to build out of context luxury development in an entirely working class community. With the passage of this bill, I hope it will never happen again to any other community in the city. Intro 1533A will require HBD to work with DCP to provide written notice of an expiring plan to affected borough presidents, council members, the speaker of the council, and community boards. This will ensure that there is enough time to take action to extend the lifetime uh, of the plan or to develop an alternative neighborhood plan. Additionally, the bill will require HPD to create a publicly accessible website with critical information on all active and expired urban renewal plans, as well as resources describing how to conduct further research on the ways urban renewal areas impact local land use and neighborhood character. This website will include a comprehensive map of where these urban renewal areas are in New York City and will link to other land use and planning tools like the zoning and land use map for further analysis. These tools will undoubtedly help public officials, advocates, and the public prepare and plan for the futures of their neighborhood. Once again, I want to thank our wonderful land use chair, David Greenfield, for his support throughout this process. I also want to particularly thank all the advocates, especially those at 596 Acres and the Urban Renew Reviewer Project, who paved the way to make information on urban renewal plans more accessible. Lastly, I want to thank members of the land use staff, Raju Mann, Julie Rubin, uh, and Jeff Campagna, and my own Director of Land Use and Planning, Roxanne Early, for their hard work and dedication to seeing this legislation through. And I urge my colleague to vote yes. Thank you. Congratulations, Councilmember. I know that you've worked hard on this issue, and it's an important issue, and it's a very significant piece of legislation. I uh, recognize Councilmember Torres for some remarks as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thought I was insufficiently clear in the position that I took in the previous so I should, um, I want to clarify my comments. Um, first, I want to state, I'm not going to repeat what I said, but I do want to state that I do not at all question the sincerity of the council's commitment to improving manufacturing. That's a deeply felt commitment, nor do I question the substance of the council's goals. My concern is about the process by which we are pursuing the text amendment. Right? I believe philosophically that a study should have been undertaken before proceeding with a citywide policy that could cripple a whole industry. And a number of, of staffers in the land use division and the chairperson, I think it was Councilman Richards said the special permit is not a ban. The fact is we don't know the answer to that question. We don't know the real world impact of a special permit requirement on self-storage. It could be that in practical terms it is the functional equivalent of a ban. So without knowing, without having conducted a study, without knowing the circumstances under which self-storage development is financed, how could we possibly state definitively that a special permit requirement is not a ban? We don't know the answer to that question. And there's no reason to think that the elimination of self-storage 
will necessarily lead to industrial uses. It could just as easily lead to land remaining vacant. It could just as easily lead to land falling prey to a whole host of non-industrial uses, including adult entertainment. You know, I know the council is confident in the fact claims that it has asserted about self-storage, but it's not confident enough to subject those fact claims to an empirical scrutiny. And that, that, that's where my core objection lies. And look, if this text amendment were based on a study that found that self-storage was a disproportionate driver of industrial displacement, I would be voting aye. Or if this were a text amendment that banned all non-industrial uses in industrial spaces, rather than singled out one industry without an empirical basis, then I would be voting aye, because I think that's a defensible principle. But I see no basis on which to single out this one industry without even conducting so much as a study and that's my core objection. And I did not mean in any way to question the sincerity of anyone's commitments to improving manufacturing. I know it's deeply felt among my colleagues. Thank you, Councilmember. The chair recognizes Councilmember Lander to be followed by Councilmember Palmer. Thank you, Chair Greenfield. I'll just add here, I think it's, it's you know, to me, it's not a question of our sincerity. Uh, I'm really proud of what the Council is doing today, and I think it's worth tracking the history here and understanding why we are where we are. We're here because the Council has chosen, through research and extensive process, to try to champion the preservation of manufacturing and industrial jobs and strengthen job generating uses in this city. This didn't travel the normal city planning process. And if we had waited for that to happen, it never would have happened. The council took the initiative to have our staff do the research for the Engines of Opportunity report, to press the mayor to do this, to push city planning to do this, and to push back when city planning made clear they didn't want to do it by gutting it at the city planning commission. So those are our choices. Our choices were wish the normal process and the traditional studies would save manufacturing jobs, but watch them wither or step up and take action in the way that the council can. So there was a lot of research done. I encourage people to read the Engines of Opportunity report. To say that this is a ban regardless of the impact of the special permit is preposterous since 75% of the self-storage in New York City is outside of IBZs. So it's obviously not a ban on self-storage in New York City, 75% of the footprint where the, the, the self-storage facilities are today this is unchanged in. And in addition, we've got special, we don't have sp the experience of special permits on self-storage facilities, but we've got the experience of special permits on many other facilities, and we know what that process looks like. Does every single thing proposed get through? Absolutely not. Do many of them get through? Of course they do. So um, it is anecdotal, but I would invite people to you know, travel with me and take a peek at 163 6th Street uh, in Gowanus, which was an active industrial site a year ago, which was closed in order to be sold to a self-storage facility. The self-storage facility is halfway through construction. I have multiple other manufacturers coming to talk to me every month about their preference to be located in Gowanus and telling me there's no way they can compete on price with self-storage facilities. Hotels are actually already not allowed in the Gowanus IBZ, so there they are not actually a competing use. And what's out competing the manufacturers more and more is self-storage facilities. So um, I'm proud of the action that the council's taking here. It is data-driven. It is rooted not just in uh, anecdote or emotion, but in our best efforts to do what we can to make sure there are jobs for people who uh, don't have the levels of, um, of education that would be required. And uh, I will proudly vote aye on this action. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Rolando. I recognize Councilman Palmer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Today I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to everyone who worked on the project in my district that we'll be voting on today in 1965 Lafayette. Um, I want to thank Amy Levitan, Jeff Ewan, the Land Use staff, Jordan Press, the whole team at HPD, Chair Richards and Chair Greenfield, and the Park Lane team for the work that was done and for taking time to really listen to the concerns that were being raised and um, by the incredible residents at the Park Lane Tenants Association who not only voiced their concerns but also made sure that they fought extremely hard for this project to include um, new quality affordable housing, significant capital upgrades to their existing um, buildings, as well as a new 30-year regulatory agreement to ensure the long-term affordability of the current um, 1965 Lafayette property residents. I must say I'm truly satisfied with this project. The collaboration between Park Lane and HPD was seamless. 
Park Lane took every possible measure to accommodate both my request as well as the needs of the current tenants. Park Lane has committed to hiring locally during the development of this project and to proceed with construction safely and, with, and working um, together with the surrounding residents in mind. Park Lane will also provide my community district with a occupancy preference of 50% of the units, heavy advertisement geared towards making the, the current residents in that community aware of the in, incoming developments and, com, and to doing community workshops to help yeah. residents in my district prepare and submit applications to live within these units. This holiday season, we all have a lot to be thankful for, but I'm especially thankful that we were able to bring two new fully affordable developments into my community right before the exit of my, t of my um, tenure here at the City Council. As I stated earlier, we're looking at approximately 296 units in one development, which includes units set aside exclusively for formerly homeless tenants as part of our space initiative. The senior development will contain approximately 133 units with 30% of the units set aside for homeless seniors. In the end, this project is emblematic of the city's commitment to providing high quality affordable housing for some of our most vulnerable New Yorkers. If there was one thing I wanted to accomplish before leaving office, it was providing more housing for my constituents, and I am proud of what we have accomplished with these developments. Again, I want to thank all the parties involved for their, for their hard work, their commitment, their patience, and the dedication to making this the best project possible, and I look forward to bringing this much-needed housing into my district. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember, and uh, congratulations again on uh, removing uh, option two and ensuring the deeper affordability on this very significant project in your district. I know it's a lot of work and uh, fantastic achievement as well. I want to welcome uh, Councilmember Barron. Also, would like to give the floor to Councilmember Reynoso. Thank you, Chair Greenfield. I uh, just want to uh, say I appreciate Councilmember. Richard Torres' uh, comments and clarification um, regarding his statements that he made at the subcommittee and appreciate um, his concern over the lack of uh, a study um, for this uh, uh, current proposal on self-storage. Um, and I just would like to make a couple of uh, remarks regarding self-storage. Uh, we're extremely concerned, of course, uh, regarding the negligent amount of jobs that it creates, uh, paying more than double the price per square footage in manufacturing districts, it is, as has been stated several times here, that it is a non-industrial use. Um, industrial advocates and, and myself and other council members have requested a comprehensive study and analysis of impacts of all non-industrial uses within IBZs, and I've been told no several times by the mayor's office and by DCP. In doing so, uh, it was uh, up to us to, to work on a plan regarding industrial uses that can protect uh, manufacturing uh, for the long term here in the city of New York. And I want to thank the work that um, the Speaker's Office and the land use uh, staff have done uh, to put in, uh, give us as much information as possible so that we can make the best decision possible. And I do want to say that an, a full EIS was uh, completed for this uh, recommendation that we are going to uh, uh, end up hopefully supporting today. And traditionally an EIS uh, speaks to the impacts or it is the standard for which we allow for it to speak to the impacts of, of what um, a lot of our recommendations would, uh, would do. So um, with that, I want to just encourage all my colleagues to vote um, yes on the self-storage. Uh, and also want to say to uh, Councilmember Annabelle Palma, uh, as, as usual, continuing to work um, tirelessly to build affordable housing in her district and to the Bronx, who I, I got to continue to keep shouting out does probably the best work when it comes to the amount of affordable housing they're building um, for the city of New York, and I think actually taking on an undue burden to be uh, the, the premier uh, borough when it comes to building affordable housing, and my concerns regarding segregation and how the, uh, the city of New York doesn't have a, comp a comprehensive citywide policy or plan to stop that from happening and not allow for the burden of building affordable housing to continue to fall on members of color or in districts of color. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, speaking of the EIS, I just would note that the EIS uh, did conclude that approximately one special permit would be approved per year based on similar kinds of special permits in the zoning resolution. I'm going to turn it over now to Councilmember Salamanca. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate the opportunity to have a healthy debate on land use items 817. 
uh, which will work to uh, which will work to permit self storage facilities within newly designated areas, which largely coincides with industrial business zones. I have two IBZs in my district. I have Hunts Point and Port Morris in the South Bronx. Both are incredibly important economic drivers for my community, our borough, and our city. And we need to protect the opportunities we currently have to continue to create new industry and manufacturing jobs. Additionally, providing the opportunity to give difference to the local members in, is merited, as a local member often knows about the issues in their community better than anyone else. While I have understood the concerns that have been raised on this issue, I believe that we have taken a step in the right direction in doing what we set out to do, which is to protect industrial space. With that said, I'm proud to support this amended zoning resolution today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councilmember Salamanca. Chair Salamanca, are there any other comments on any of the other items here today? Okay. I uh, don't see any other comments. I do want to uh, congratulate the uh, folks in the industrial industry worked hard and worked on this uh, for years. And many of us, many of our offices uh, work with many different folks, but they were primarily organized by ANHD, and the individual responsible for that is uh, Armando Chapelkin, who's here with us today, who's done a lot of work, and I want to recognize work that he and the coalition put into this. So thank you for your partnership on that. Okay, seeing no other remarks from council members, unless Council Member Cohen wants to weigh in. You can explain your vote. Okay, so we'll get, we'll get to that shortly. I will now call a vote in accordance with the recommendations of the subcommittees and with the support of the local members to approve pre-considered LU 404 seat primary school, pre-considered LU's 1965 Lafayette Avenue tax exemptions, LU 825 small homes rehab tax exemption, intro 1661A, the Urban Agriculture Bill, Intro 1533A, the Urban Renewal Tracker Bill, and the Preconsidered Resolution for ESDC's Restore New York program for the Station Plaza. And to approve with modifications I have already described, LUs 800 through 801, the 1965 Lafayette Avenue rezoning, LUs 802 through 804, the East Chester Road rezoning, LUs 805 through 807, the National Black Theater application, LU 817, the Self Storage Tax Amendment, and LU 785 through 786, the Special Harlem River Waterfront District Expansion application. I will ask the clerk to please call the roll. Committee Clerk Matthew DiStefano, Committee on Land Use, roll call on items coupled for a vote as printed in today's land use calendar. Chair Greenfield. I welcome all of our guests in the balcony and I vote aye. Gentile. Palma. Aye. Garodnik. Mendez. Lander, Levin. Congratulations to Land Use staff for putting so many hours into this uh, self storage proposal and striking the right balance. I vote aye on all. Rose. Aye. Williams. Some additional questions on land use A02, A03, A04, so I'll be abstaining and all the best. Richards. Uh, congratulations to uh, Councilmember Palmer. Also, uh, congratulations to Perkins on uh, the National Black Theater application. And also, congrats to the advocates in the self storage industry for reaching a compromise. I vote aye. Byron. I vote aye on all. Cohen. Permission to explain my vote. Council Member Cohen, we've been anxiously awaiting your remarks and we're looking forward <laughs> to you explaining your vote. Well, I'm going to tell you, I think this is only maybe the second or third time in the four years that I have explained my vote and I just want to go on record as saying while uh, I'm proudly going to vote aye on the self-storage issue, uh, I think that there are many, many broader issues uh, outside of IBZ, citywide. Uh, I personally feel that there, you know, that there are scourge on, on my home borough in Bronx County that, that they really present some urban blight issues that I, I'm profoundly concerned about. So I hope we have the opportunity to revisit this, but I do think this is an incremental step forward. Uh, and with that, I am going to vote aye on all. Thank you. 
So you want us to just ban all self-storage facilities? That's sort of where you're going with this conversation. If you're asking for a vote on that right now, I'll be happy to give it. <laughs> for the record, this is not a ban. It is only a special <laughs> permit. We we'll still allow self-storage facilities exactly. if they meet the criteria. Exactly. Thank you, Ma Councilmember Cohen. We appreciate that perspective. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to encourage Councilmember Cohen to explain his vote more often. Okay, we got it. <laughs> Kalos. Reynoso. Uh, I vote aye on all. Torres. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Sure. Council I, I do want to respond to, to something Councilman Rolander said. You know, I had expressed concern that we don't know whether a special permit requirement on IBZs is the functional equivalent of a ban on self-storage in, in IBZs, right? It may be, it might not be. I don't know the answer to that question because each industry has its own financing requirements. I don't know the circumstances under which financing is available to self-storage development. It could be that a process of public review would inhibit financing. But to characterize that fair question as preposterous, I think is unfair to me. Uh, I can assure you that whatever position I take could be wrong, you could disagree with it, but I can assure you it's not preposterous. Uh, with that said, I vote no. Just for the record, do you vote aye on the other items? <laughs> do you vote aye on the other items? I do vote aye on the other okay. items, yes. Thank you. Yep. Kalos. Aye and all. Traeger. Uh, with congratulations to my colleague, Councilmember Annabelle Palma, who has championed affordable housing in her district. Also, congratulations to my colleague, Councilmember Perkins, and his excellent achievements in his district. I vote aye. Grudenchik. You are not, but you can feel free to explain your vote if I'm you I'm going like. to explain just a No, I really don't need to explain too much. I just want to congratulate my colleagues who are passing legislation this morning. I especially want to congratulate Mr. Perkins on the National Black Theater. I was very impressed, and I wish you all good luck uh, with that. Uh, I understand how important culture is as the brother of a professional actor. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I vote aye on all uh, except for the pre-considered resolution, which I will be abstaining on. I'm sorry, what was that about being a professional actor? He is a professional actor. Who is? My brother. Oh, your bro I thought you were a professional actor. I, was I am. Okay. Uh, your brother. I, at times I'm a character, but I'm really an actor. So. Got it, got it, okay. Because, you know, Councilmember Williams, is he still here? He was here. He's, he is, in fact, uh, an aspiring professional actor. So I just want to make sure there's no competition here. There's a lot more pay in, in being a councilman than there is in being an actor, general, but, generally. Fair enough. Let's continue the roll. Thank you, Councilmember. Salamanca. I vote aye on all. Okay, the, the following is a breakdown of today's land use committee vote. Uh, the following items were approved by the committee by a vote of 18 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Intro 1553A, intro 1661A, LU825, the two pre-considered LU items in regard to 1965 Lafayette Avenue, the pre-considered LU in regard to the 400-seat primary school facility, the pre-considered resolution regarding ESDC, Restore New York program for the Station Plaza project, passed by a vote of 17 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, one abstention. The following items were approved with modifications by a vote of 18 in affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. LU 785 and LU 786. LUs 800, 801, 805, 806, 807. The items LU 800, excuse me, items L 802 to 804 were passed by a vote of 17 in affirmative, zero in the negative, and one abstention. And LU817 was approved with modifications by a vote of 17 in affirmative, one in negative, and no abstentions. Thank you. I want to thank our outstanding land use staff for literally spending thousands of hours, thousands of hours of work on all, all of the items on today's uh, agenda, and especially the years of effort that went into the <coughs> IBZ special permit, and uh, appreciate their efforts. And I'd like to 
as is our practice, we're going to keep the vote open for a few minutes for members who are currently in other committees, and we will close out at 12.40 p.m.